Uh, my name is Nuria Caral. Um, I started a postdoc one year ago in Andrew's lab to work on, uh, on knowledge discovery over uh, try to predict uh, drugs repurpose for the NGLA1 deficiency uh, that is, that is uh, uh, a rare disease. Um, this is a team effort, uh, but I'm going to show you uh, the, its work in progress. And I'm going to show you just a glimpse of the project. And So my first contact to the semantic web was uh, 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 translating this genet. It's a database of gene disease associations. Part of you, maybe you know me because of that. Um, in fact, a prior work, I was working on um, integrating different heterogeneous data using biomark technologies. And I was uh, hired for six months for translating this genet this database into nano publications. Um, well, six months where it finally were uh, translated into four years because uh, I was fascinated uh, um, about the semantic web. And, but after these four uh, years, I was curious to, okay, we, we have this nice uh, distributed uh, um, resources integrated and I was I'm curious to um, to test it uh, to get uh, new new knowledge so in my current position they offered me the opportunity to do that to to apply knowledge discovery um, tools uh, over knowledge graphs with the uh, motivation of uh, performing drug repurposing uh, that is a uh, uh, getting new uses, new indications for all drugs, for approved, approved drugs. Uh, that is a, uh, is a strategy for um, that low uh, the cost and the time to, for drug discovery. And apply this strategy for in the rare disease field um, that is especially challenging for clinical medical managing and for uh, this kind of economical burden cause uh, cause due to comorbidities they are usually linked to these rare diseases and uh, social impact because uh, globally um, people that suffer from uh, rare diseases are seven percent of the, of the global population so um, I entered this world of the artificial intelligence it's my first experience here to mine uh, knowledge uh, graphs so, in particular, uh, our use case in rare diseases is NGA1 deficiency uh, because um, we have the opportunity to work uh, closely in collaboration with uh, wet lab researchers that are, uh, uh, their research is focused on the NGA1 deficiency. And what it is NGA1 deficiency? It's a congenital disease. It's the first congenital uh, disorder reported about um, of the um, of the sorry the deglycosylation. Uh, it was first reported on 2012. It's quite recent, um, uh, linking uh, different um, uh, different broad spectrum of um, phenotypes linked to a patient. Uh, uh, of a patient uh, through a whole exome sequencing, and they uh, uh, discovered the connection between this new disorder and the NGA1 gene. And the problem uh, in these patients is that some mutations in this gene uh, seems to be the cause that the cells of the body cannot synthesize uh, this protein that ends the enzyme and like an and glycanase, canase, one, sorry. So uh, it's extremely rare disease uh, because uh, uh, that is known is uh, has reported about less than 100 patients and um, clinically uh, has a broad spectrum of phenotypes, uh, very heterogeneous and not fully characterized. Um, one of the most prevalent um, uh, phenotype associated to this uh, um, disorder is alacrima. Uh, uh, 
uh, movement disorders, development delay, and some liver disease problems. So the problem here is that this disorder, uh, we don't have treatment for this disorder. Uh, there is no understanding about the disease etiology, and we have a lack of data. So molecularly, what we know is that some uh, uh, heterozygotic uh, and homozygotic uh, mutations have been the, co the cause of the, of the deficiency of this protein in the cells. Uh, the NGLA1 gene encodes the, this uh, enzyme, the anglicanase one, that is well conserved in eukaryotes. Uh, one of uh, the non-function function of this uh, protein is uh, has enzymatic activity. It cuts the, in, gly in misfolded glycoproteins, it cuts the uh, glycopart from the protein protein par part, and it has been linked to the error pathway, the endoplasmic reticulum associated degradation pathway, um, and the. Um, uh, and it's, uh, it seems that it's uh, a key player, the NGLA1 um, gene in, in this pathway, in this uh, degradation mechanism. Also, at level of expression, it's widely spread on organ and tissues, and it's been associated to, to neurological and metabolic disorders. So, our goals are to generate uh, or predict. A hypothesis on clinical therapies for the, this disorder to cure or improve uh, the quality of life of patients uh, using this drug repurposing approach. Uh, the strategy is to use um, a knowledge graph representation of the of the knowledge, a knowledge base strategy, um, NGLA1, NGLA1 oriented. So trying to represent all that we know about uh, NGLA1 and uh, apply graph mining tools for discovery. And also to try not only make these predictions of drugs, of, of candidate drugs, uh, but also make um, this hypothesis um, based on evidence. So uh, we are working with this um, algorithm with this repetitive system. It was developed in, Bar in the Baranzini, Baranzini uh, lab. It's an open, uh, it's an open project. Uh, very nice. You can track all the uh, uh, reasoning and all what they have been doing during these last years about this project uh, on Sing Lab. And also, um, it's a workflow of uh, Jupyter notebooks. You can follow. Um, quite well uh, the workflow and um, how it operates and, um, and uh, recently it has been applied this, approach, this, this system, this algorithm to also uh, drug repurposing. So in particular um, they have developed a, a knowledge graph, a, a big uh, network related to drug repurposing uh, integrating um, 1,500 um, drugs, approved drugs, and 140 uh, common diseases. Uh, also, uh, there is information about known treatments, uh, about uh, 800 treatments um, from these um, non inclusion diseases. And um, it's deployed in Neo4j, Neo4j, and well, you can see here um, maybe the, um, how it looks like uh, this network. So it contains, it's, uh, it integrates uh, uh, most of the recent knowledge and biomedical knowledge of the last years, um, in integrating. 30 databases. Uh, here I show you the, the data schema. Mainly is the, um, you can see the we have gene and component disease very well connected with different semantic relationships. 
and also some attributes for um, this type of, 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 of nodes, like pathways, side effects, phenotypes, anatomy, uh, pharmacological, pharmacological classes. Um, <clears throat> ah, one of the resources that has been integrated is this DigiNet, the uh, Gene Disease Association database, just parentheses. I'm the link here in the bioethicathon of the DigiNet RDF. Uh, I've been, I've, I'm um, still in contact with my last group that developed the, the database. So now has been released, recently released uh, version 5. So um, if you are interested in using it during the hackathon, that I think that some of you are interested in, so don't doubt, don't, don't doubt to contact me, and I will be happy to be the bridge in between them and, and you. Close parentheses. So at level of uh, algorithm, um, uh, Repetio based, um, based um, uh, uh, it's mining algorithm on this path predict that's, um, to make predictions about the relationship, uh, the possible relationship uh, between nodes in heterogeneous um, networks based on this causal relationship between uh, the geographic networks. Uh, and it's basically based on extracting as a topological feature of the, uh, to describe the structure of the network using the metapaths concept. Um, what is a metapath? A metapath is, um, let's say, the semantics of uh, of 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 the um, of, of the possible path that that um, one source node uh, is linked to a target node. Uh, for example, if mm, between two, a pair of nodes, uh, we, can, uh, we can go um, through. Uh, I don't know. Um, gene is associated to disease that is treated to a uh, drug, then the metapath is this, this gene associates um, disease um, drug. So, um, uh, the future that uh, the metrics, to, um, so what describes the metapath is the connectivity between nodes and the metrics to, uh, to um, measure the similarity uh, of this connectivity is uh, in this case in Repetio is the degree weighted pathway count that it basically counts the prevalence of the number of instances in each metapath uh, from one node to another. Uh, so from the network that we have uh, to extract this shooter what we have to do is uh, to um, explore all the paths that link one target node, a source, one source node to a target node, uh, extract this um, that way, um, degree weighted uh, path count filters, uh, and use this uh, matrix, uh, filter matrix to apply uh, and train a machine learning, in this case, uh, they use uh, logistic regression with uh, machine learning. So one of the important things, and we are interested in this model, is one of the reasons that we are interested in this system is the interpretability that offers the metapath-based um, predictions. Uh, because you can see in a predicted pair, you can see the, the most contributing, contributing paths and metapaths that explain and, um, this relationship. So uh, one of the things that we are, have been doing in, the, in our lab is uh, to enrich Repetio with uh, rare disease content. Mm, one task was um, to enrich uh, this network with NGLA1, no, uh, the NGLA1 deficiency knowledge that we have, and also uh, uh, to enrich with rare disease content in general to, to train the model with, with uh, connections and, 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 and known uh, treatments of, uh, of, rare diseases, uh, of rare diseases. So uh, the first task was curate, uh, extract this information of NGLA1 knowledge from like literature. I must say that uh, curate is not easy at all. Um, 
basically, uh, I, we, I, we published um, two papers, one that describes the molecular um, um, knowledge link that possibly is linked to the patho pathophysiology of the disorder. Uh, in particular, is um, this paper of 2014 that describes this link between the NGA1 gene and, 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 and the error pathway. So this is the network of creative statements from this, this um, paper. And mainly what, what we have sorry, is the disease uh, with all these phenotypes and uh, the disease linked to the gene and protein and, and the gene linked to the ER pathway, basically. So, because uh, it appears, uh, this year appears a prospective phenotyping of the NGLA1 deficiency, we decided that, uh, also to, to curate this paper and well describe more, mm, more the NGLA1 deficiency spectrum. So uh, we extracted like um, 100 phenotypes for uh, for um, the NGA1 deficiency from eight that were in curated databases. So and um, how, how part of these phenotypes were included in the in the human phenotype ontology. So we are structuring new knowledge for NGA1. Um, So if you see the difference between uh, the phenotypes associated to the NGA1 deficiency on the right uh, from 2014 and this last paper uh, with this fancy description uh, it has increased a lot. And I'm curious about if this uh, granulated um, description, phenotype description of the deficiency is going to help us uh, or not to make better predictions. So the strategy to anchor uh, the NGA1 deficiency into HeadNet is uh, using this, basically all this knowledge of this deep phenotyping, um, and also uh, integrate uh, links between genes and rare diseases and phenotypes of rare diseases from OrphanNet, and uh, enrich the gold standard, uh, the known treatments uh, with rare diseases information extracted from Drug Central. And also, we asked to the human disease ontology to um, create this new term for the NGLA1 deficiency. Um, well, um, pros and cons of uh, we we have um, mm, we have some mm, first results, explorative results uh, using the material for um, uh, of drug candidates for NGLA1. Very. Explorative, but pros and cons of the using this system. Uh, pros definitely is the interpretability that uh, gives us uh, the opportunity to show the results to the lab, um, web lab um, researcher and receive his input and, and feedback to um, improve the system. And cons is the, scala the poor scalability of the system right now, um, it, it's high computational cost and that is only based on connectivity similarity, the predictions. So recently, for example, are coming up uh, uh, papers using uh, network embedding transformation and including the metapath uh, based representation uh, into this. Uh, in particular, um, during the last hackathon, um, Robert Hunter led an Proposed this nice project about knowledge discovery using combining um, neural networks, combining connectivity, connectivist uh, artificial intelligence, and symbolic uh, reasoning. And uh, this started the last biohackathon. So, right now, my proposal for this year is to apply this algorithm or yeah, this algorithm to this uh, rare disease focus repetio, and or if any one of you, I, I ask you for your con your con uh, your contribution. Uh, <laughs> don't stress me. <laughs> um, 
Uh, I'm interested to include ontologies, all this knowledge uh, on ontologies to project this knowledge into the network, uh, new uh, edges that can be useful for make um, more uh, plausible predictions, text mining data that can be uh, of interest as well. Uh, if you have ideas of a new algorithm, uh, come. Um, yeah. And join me, please, if you're interested. Uh, as much as we are, as much um, um, far away we can uh, we can arrive. And just thank you to my form, uh, my lab, to the, the lab. Uh, it's really nice um, being there. And also the organizers of the Biohackathon, the host uh, in Niwate uh, of the current Biohackathon, and the fund, the funding institutions. So. Thanks for the question.